talked about. Yeah, that. and 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 no one has. This is again. This is like another phrase that I've said to people in the shop, online, in person. No one has ever developed um, bad habits faster by shooting lower poundage. You develop bad habits and poor control by just trying to launch and get as fast and high, quick and heavy as possible. You know, you could shoot 45 pounds the rest of your life and have the best form, the best execution, and your arrow just goes slower. And you feel maybe a little less manly on the inside. <laughs> Big freaking deal. <laughs>so for those uh kind of new guys out there you know talked before you kind of went live what's what's kind of your approach to never guy walking in says hey look my buddies want to take me bow hunting don't anything about it you know what's uh, what's your advice to those newbies out there how do they pick a bow? what do they look for what do they stay away from what questions to ask and you know be able to kind of journey you know that that or navigate that journey i guess yeah. Yeah. And that's a great, that's, that's a great thing. Cause we get that a lot. Hey, I want to, I want to get into, we saw that a lot with, like I said, back to COVID. Hey, I want to get an archery. Okay. Where do you start? Well, you go on YouTube and then just have your brain explode yeah. or you can go into your local shop. If you have one, the first question you got, or the only question, the first thing you say, listen, my top <laughs> budget line is this. Can I walk out of the shop under this budget line? And if you have somebody who's obviously know what stock they have on the wall, they should be able to say, okay, I can get you, I mean, everything, releases, arrows, rest, bow, et cetera. You need to pick a hard line because in archery, it's easy to pick a $400 bow and then have $800 in accessories. It's super mm -hmm. simple to do that. So that's the number one thing. When someone walks in is have a hard budget. Know what that budget needs to be. Do a little bit of research, like pick, you know, compound bow packages, find out. And that number is usually in the four to 600 range. And if that's what you can afford, stick to that. Because nearly every manufacturer offers something in that price range. Mm -hmm. Reputable manufacturer. PSE, Bear, Diamond, a lot of them in the budget stuff. And then, of course, flagships are out the wazoo. So number one is pick that. And then the number two thing is don't overestimate your strength. Do not overestimate it. You think you could do 50, 60, 70 pounds, just, just pump the brakes a little bit. Think 45. Think 50 is like your good starting. But if you're a full-grown dude, 40 to 50 pounds is perfectly normal with today's equipment. It's pretty smooth. It's easy to do, but stick to your budget. Don't think you're going to be cranking 70, 80 pounds. It's cool to watch crispy do it, but he's been shooting, you know, since he was in diapers. So that type of stuff, those are probably the two biggest pieces of mentality to go into and then just learn to build off of those. Cause you, you your draw length, obviously, but your draw length. So dependent on the type of bow that you're going to be shooting, you know, your physique and all that sort of stuff. And hopefully you have a reputable shop that's able to help you out with that. That was a really good point you made about the uh, uh, the draw, and it's, it's it's funny because I've you know I just got a new bow. It's a eighty pound uh, prime inline five, and I love the bow. But it's funny because I'll have guys come over to the house like, "Oh, this is your bow, man!" And you know the first thing they want to do is, "Hey, can I shoot it?" And I was like, "I really don't recommend it for a lot of different reasons." <laughs> but the first one is, is the, the reason I'm like, "Okay, fine, I'll kind of like let it," because I know they can't pull it back, you know. And it's like not that they're a stronger. Some of them, are, like I say, probably even just a stronger, stronger, stronger than I am. But they've never really used those muscles to that extent. They don't oh. really know how to engage those muscles in the proper way to make that work. And so it's funny. Because you can have, like, I think uh, Cam Haynes did this on one of his YouTube videos where he had Mark Bell, who's like a power lifter, try to shoot bow. And you can see him just struggling with it. And it's just you've never activated those muscles in that sequence. So starting out for your first bow, something like 40, 50 pounds, you know, it's like, OK, like, can you do this? OK, can you go consistently for, let's say, 60 shots, 50, 60 shots, you know, and then from there, if you're like, OK, well, that's really easy. Like, OK, well, maybe we can step it up a little bit. And I think having some of the a lot of those bows in that that four to six hundred dollar range that are really flexible where you can just you know turn a screw on the limbs or something like that and adjust that draw weight i think that's really important so look if you're looking for a new bow i think that's something flexibility to grow with that thing is is, is a huge thing to look at what do you think about yeah that? and 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 no one has this is again this is like another phrase that i've said to people in the shop online in person no one has ever developed um bad habits faster by shooting lower poundage you develop bad habits and poor control by just trying to launch and get as fast and high, quick and heavy as possible. You know, you could shoot 45 pounds the rest of your life and have the best form, the best execution, and your arrow just goes slower. And you feel maybe a little less manly on the inside. Big freaking deal. <laughs> You're right. Big freaking deal. 
because yeah. you can be like, I'm going to go crank 70 and you just, you try to get to 70 as fast as you can. You're working out, you're doing this, that and everything. Then you get to 70 pounds and you're, you have a funky draw. You're not, you're, you're, you're not efficient with it. You're, you tire out fast. You're not really working on form. And all of a sudden now you have target panic or worse. And, and if you had just stayed at 45 and just and dealt with it, you'd been a lot better off. So, yeah. And then, and then a lot of those bows have that flexibility, you know, 10 to 70 pounds or some of the mid price bears or have like a 15 pound pound range, which I think is great. I wish every flagship bow had a 15 pound weight range. I think they'd sell 20 times more of them than if they just had 10. Um, but yeah, there's just the, the, the more flexibility you have there to kind of grow with the bow. I know it feels very intermediate and beginner, but modern day bows are just so much better than where they were 10 years ago when it came to the bud quote unquote budget or intermediate beginner level. They're just, they're eons. They're eons better. That was one thing I found too, is like I say, when shooting this bow, my other bow was a, uh, a Martin max 33 from 2018. And, uh, it was a great bow. It was 70 pounds, but it had a real aggressive draw cycle. And, uh, Again, it's lasted me several years, and it's a great bow. But like I say, whenever I came to try out all the bows, I did a video where I tried out uh, pretty much all the bows from the past two years in one form or another. Some of them, it literally just once I held the grip in my hand, I was like, okay, there's no way I want to love you like this bow. So I didn't even shoot some of them. But uh, I at least tried them out. And then, like I say, whenever I started finding, I was like, dude, okay, if this is at 70 pounds and this is, you know, it feels like a six, my older 60 pound bow that I used to shoot like 80 pounds for me should be no, no problem. And for me, like I say it was, but I've been shooting for five, six, seven years now, I think. So, you know, but like I say, for having that flexibility to start off, like start off 40, 50. Okay. Well, that's easy. Then go up to 60. Cause I always encourage people. It's like, if you can become more lethal in some way or another, I, I guarantee that it's a great thing to do, you know? So if you can go to the gym and train, and I think it's better for your health that way too, you can increase your strength, your stability and your muscles and everything. Uh, it's a good idea, but like I say, I think there's a, a it's kind of like going through grade school. It's like you don't start doing algebra in kindergarten, you know, you don't start doing, you know, all, calculus in junior high, you know. So I think there's you got to kind of work up to something like that. But I always encourage people like if you can go take that next step up, I think it's a good thing to do because I think it makes you a little bit more lethal in a lot of different aspects. So. I like, you know, one of the things I always kind of think about too is, you know, I've been thinking, you know, we've talked about this before, Travis, I have about going up to 70 pounds. I shoot 65 right now and uh, have killed anything I wanted to kill. Yeah. So yeah, I've not had any issues with it. But one thing I talked to the the bow guys about, because I, I got emailed Nate about the Matthews when he answered me about the, the new bow smell. And uh, their response to me was, you know, how far are you truly going to shoot? one and two can you hold that 65 pounds for a long period of time if that animal's moving or they change direction you're cold you're amped up and i'm like yes so they said then leave it alone i mean there's no reason to go any higher i mean you, you're dialed in that you know and i thought that was very fair of them to say that and it made a lot of sense right so that's my two cents on <laughs> <laughs> living, in, living in familiar living in that comfort right it, yeah. you, you need your bow to be comfort food right if you feel uncomfortable or you feel disorganized when you're shooting or 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 if you like one day you've got it nailed the next day you feel like you're you're just so out of whack then then you need to take a step back and look at the situation and go what am i doing or or what am i overdoing or am i trying to force right and you just can't you can't force it Right. And if you're comfortable at something and this is this is why I did a video, I don't know, a couple months back about the whole like a bow wound out to 60 pounds versus being, you know, all the way in at 70 and the efficiency and all that garbage. And it was basically because there are guys that mentally can't handle the fact that a, it's a 70 pound bow that's wound down to 60 pounds because it's not mm. as efficient. Oh, will I ever be able to shoot an arrow? <laughs> oh, it's just oh, everything's going to explode. And, yeah. and I mean, I've seen it. I've watched guys have absolute panic attacks because i i tell them they're like i want this bow i'm like okay but i want it in a 60 pound peak okay well i have it right now in 70 and i'll wind it to 60 but if you want me to order it in a 60 i can but you got to wait four to six weeks and i can literally see their brain melting <laughs> out of their ears because they can't they they, they want the bow in front of oh, them man. so bad but their brain <laughs> wants them to have the real and it's like dude just uh, chill right. but like <laughs> um, I, one phrase I've been saying a lot recently, because now we're starting the shop, is that I can't sell you confidence. 
I can't sell you confidence, but you can buy it, mm. right? I cannot sell you confidence, but you can buy it. And if you feel confident with something when you're shooting in the shop, right? You pick up a bear, let's say, like, oh, this feels great. My hand going back to the grip thing you were saying, like you picked it up and you're like, I just knew this was not going to happen. If you pick something up and you're like, that doesn't feel comfortable, then don't even consider it, mm -hmm. right? Pick it up and go, oh, that feels good. Okay, then shoot it. Does it feel good to shoot? Cool. Put it on the rack and say, this is an option. If you pick something up, I don't care what the brand is on the limb sticker. If you pick it up and you're like, I just don't like how this feels, you're not going to like it in an hour. Mm. So don't walk, don't buy it. If that initial, it, a bow is very different. You want to pick that thing up and be like, this feels good in your hand because you're going to be shooting it for a while. You want it mm -hmm. to be comfortable right out of the gate. And that's yeah. a big thing too, because I had that kind of, uh, for me, it was kind of an existential crisis because for a long time I've been shooting these Martin bows. I've had two of them and they were just great. And they were quieter than a lot of bows out there. They were like, you know, significantly cheaper for the features you got. There's a lot of good things about it. But then like, you know, started coming down to it. And I felt like I realized, you know, uh, that that I, I was hanging on to, I was waiting for their, their new bows to be released, you know, which I don't even think, I think they, the 2022 bows still haven't come out. But I was waiting for them. I was just, I uh, realized like, okay, like I've gone past, um, you know, getting something that's right. And I've just been sitting there waiting for this brand. You know, it's usually the opposite where people see, you know, like you said, Chris B shooting a, a Hoyt or then it switches to Matthews and they want to go sell their Hoyt so they can go buy a Matthews or something like that, you know, but uh, for me, it was, it was funny because it was kind of the opposite. I was kind of attached to that smaller brand, but eventually I started shooting them and I realized like, you know, that like I say, it's not about the brand. It's just it's literally every year you can go pick up all the different bows and you can find something that completely fits you different or something you <clears> like <throat> that you didn't know existed. And so I always recommend people just try out everything you can possibly get your hands on. Mm -hmm. I traveled to four different states to go to different bow shops. I was in Missouri, twice in Missouri, Texas, Louisiana, and uh, I think. Like somewhere out east, I can't remember. But anyways, I went to four different states to try to all the different bow shops, all the different bows I could get my hands. Oh, Salt Lake City, Utah. That's right. So, it, like I say, I always recommend just like the variety is the spice of life. And same thing with archery, man. Don't get locked. Don't lock yourself in. Don't you know walk out there if you find something that works, great. You know, share your experience with people. So, if you're gonna buy a thousand dollars, I'll say this, and then I'll let I'll let Dean talk here. If you're gonna if you're gonna <laughs> buy, I have to. If you're gonna drop a thousand dollars on a bow. Do not make up your mind before you walk into the store. Mm. Anybody who's listening, if you're going to drop a thou, I don't care if you like the look of it, please. Every single bow that you can find with an red, Martin, PSE, Athens, Prime, Bear, Elite, Hoyt, whatever, Matthews, whatever you can find, do it. Because if, if you don't, you, you, you potentially could miss the bow that's going to fit you best. And you're dropping a thousand bucks. If it was like $300, whatever, man, do the roulette. It doesn't matter, but it's a thousand bucks. Please make the effort. If you, I hate it when guys are like, I'm going to buy my very first flagship bow. Cool. I will set all of these. We carried five bow brands in, in our, in the store that I worked at. And, and I'd be like, I'll set all these flagship. No, I think I'm just going to shoot that one. And I'm like, okay, would you like to try the other, maybe another one, maybe one that's comparable, maybe the same size? Nope. I don't think I'm just going to try that one. And it pained me because he'd go downstairs, he'd shoot three airs, be like, yeah, that feels good. I'm like, all right, man, it's your wallet. And I would set it up for him and I'd kick him out the door. <laughs> and I felt bad because like, and particularly if you're like a, I don't want to say normal size dude, but if you're like in that, that like five, eight to six, one range, and you don't have a really gangly draw length or super short one, there's a lot of good bows that fit you out there. Yeah. That's and, uh, yeah, this guy right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guilty. Six, four, <laughs> have like three options. <laughs> right. one. Um, uh, we're so like, so like, but too. if you're, if you're like a 28 to 29 draw length, please, for the love of God, try all the bows. All right. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Smasher Pass podcast here on the Apex Predator Outdoors YouTube channel. Uh, if you would like to know whenever we go live, just click the subscribe button down below and click the notification bell so you know immediately whenever we go live and you can join in the conversation. And also a new feature we've got available is that you can go and sign up for a membership to where you can actually join in our live chats with some of these people that come on the show. So thank you for watching. Keep, click subscribe down below. And as always, guys, keep defying the odds.